this is extremely significant not just for grenada but for the entire caribbean um this represents a step in the right direction of the british monarchy we know for a fact that they have been involved with the atlantic slave trade and they played a leading role with regards to the atlantic slave trade and slavery Now, Buckingham Palace says it's cooperating with an independent study into the links between the British monarchy and the slave trade in the 17th and 18th centuries. The research is being carried out by the University of Manchester with historic royal palaces. Full access will be granted to the royal archives, with the study expected to be completed in 2026. Our royal correspondent, Nicholas Witchell, explains just how significant this is for the royal family. Well, it's clearly a sensitive and important issue. And this study, I gather, started in October, just uh, one month after the new king came to the throne in September. It's not expected to report until uh, 2026. And it is in the hands of a researcher at the University of Manchester who has experience in this field. And as you mentioned, Buckingham Palace is making both the Royal Archives and the Royal Collection completely accessible to the researchers. Um, both the King and the Prince of Wales have expressed their profound sorrow at the uh, implications and impact of the slave trade in centuries gone by. The King, as Prince of Wales, did so at the heads of government meeting at the Commonwealth Conference in Rwanda last year when he talked about his uh, personal sorrow. I cannot describe the depths of my personal sorrow at the suffering of so many. And the Prince of Wales expressed similar sentiments uh, during a visit to the Caribbean last year. So it is clearly important for the British monarchy to be seen to be addressing this issue, the transatlantic slave trade in which Britain participated in the late 17th and 18th centuries, albeit that Britain was then at the forefront of banning the international slave trade. But they want to get uh, to the detail of uh, the extent, if any, of any investments by a uh, former British monarchs in slave trading companies and whatever other implications there may be. Nicholas, you mentioned investments there. There's often talk about reparations that are paid to people who've been influenced and affected by the slave trade. Is that a conversation you think the British monarchy might have? Um, but there's no information about that. I think that it will certainly be something that will be in their minds, but I think that they want to understand fully and completely the extent of any involvement by former British monarchs, by the royal household in this trade, before deciding how to respond to whatever information may come forward. So there is certainly no suggestion at this stage of reparations, uh, but I think that they want uh, fully to understand what the implications, what the involvement, if any, was. Nicholas, it's been a tumultuous few years for the British monarchy. Obviously, that the death of the Queen was one big event, but we've also had events like losing Barbados as part of the Commonwealth, really bringing the, the question in of the, the future of the British monarchy. What, what does this tell us about the future of royal life? I don't think it tells us anything at all. I mean, there is no question of, about the future of the British monarchy, uh, certainly in the United Kingdom context, but clearly with the change of reign, the uh, transition to Charles III, there will be questions being asked around those countries, 14 other countries which have the British head of state as their head of state. And again, Charles made it absolutely clear at the Commonwealth Conference in Rwanda last year that each country must make its own decision. And in a, 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 a democratic context, that will be completely understood by Buckingham Palace by him if other democratic countries decide that they want to break away and cease to be monarchies, uh, constitutional monarchies, and if they feel that they wish now to become republics. Nicholas Witchell there, our royal correspondent. Well, let's go now to Arlie Gill. He's chairman of Grenada's National Reparations Commission and a former ambassador. Mr Gill, thank you very much for making the time for us. We heard from our correspondent there how significant this is for Britain's royal family. But how significant is this for a country like Grenada? Thank you very much for having me today. This is extremely significant, not just for Grenada, but for the entire Caribbean. 
Um, this represents a step in the right direction of the British monarchy. We know for a fact that they have been involved with the Atlantic slave trade, and they played a leading role with regards to the Atlantic slave trade and slavery. That research would um, provide more details as to the extent of their involvement, and also with regards to the profits that they have made, the investments they have made coming out of the Atlantic slave trade. I hope that uh, that research probably could be extended to the involvement with regards to slavery and the plantations and the owning of slaves um, in the Caribbean uh, and um, to give a full picture of the British monarchy's involvement, in not just the Atlantic slave trade, but to, about regards also to slavery here in the Caribbean. So this is a very significant um, and momentous uh, occasion um, with regards to the at least the British monarchy uh, accepting the fact that um, they were involved and also making the, the archives available to these researchers. Also, too, it will be heartening if uh, the University of Manchester would involve um, the University of the West Indies professors to assist in the research so that um, when we say independent, um, we, we, we truly mean independent, not just um, lecturers and professors from the UK, but also Caribbean experts can play a role um, in, 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 in that research. Mr. Gill, you mentioned profits earlier on. You're chair of the Reparations Commission. Is that ultimately what Grenada and other countries are looking for, reparation payments? Of course, that is the, ultimately that is what we want. And uh, I heard the correspondent spoke earlier with the, the King and the Prince of Wales speaking of being profoundly um, um, sorrowful for the, the involvement with regards to slave trade and slavery. We would want and demand that that profound sorrow be converted into a, an apology of acceptance that what they have done is a crime against humanity. And um, they should make some repair with regards to the harm that was caused by the actions and the involvement with in the slave trade and slavery. So we're hoping that this um, research would, would trigger um, the discussion of reparative justice in the in the in the castle of the British monarchy, and indeed um, in the Parliament of, of the British government in in in, in the soonest possible time. OK, Arle Gill, Chairman of Grenada's National Reparations Commission. Thank you very much for joining us on the programme. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me.